This was quite an involved video. So, I got help. I thought you said you can't replace a real human voice. Cancel. I'm not Alexa. If only. You cheeky bastard. <laughs> This topic came from a lunchtime question that just burst into life. I didn't realise how popular text-to-speech had become. Now, my first experience with text-to-speech was with a Sound Blaster Pro audio card. That was 1992. It came with its own text-to-speech tool called Dr. Spezzo. Hello, John. My name is Dr. Spezzo. I am here to help you. Say whatever is in your mind freely. Our conversation will be kept in strict confidence. Sounds like a perfect match for Siri. He can't speak, and she can't understand a word anyone says. Wow, we're not bitter, are we? It wasn't brilliant. Um, it made Stephen Hawking sound sexy, but it was the first time I could make my PC talk and say whatever I want. The voices have got better over time, and now they serve us in many ways, including Alexa, Siri, Cortana, Google Assistant, and many more. Now, thanks to the internet, more and more people want to share their knowledge and experience by way of YouTube videos, e-learning, marketing advertisements. But not everybody is comfortable giving speeches or appearing in front of a camera. Some people don't feel comfortable with their accent or dialect. They don't think it's suitable and would rather have the vocals done professionally. Now, even with the advancements in text-to-speech, you, you still can't beat a real human voice for voiceovers, but it costs money to hire a voice actor. And a lot of companies have jumped on this demand for modern digital creation, and a flood of text-to-speech tools have come out over the past couple of years, promoting the ability to do voiceover work at a low cost that sounds as good as the real thing. The two that I hear about most are Speechalo and Talkia. Now, I'm familiar with the owners of Tokyo because I use some of their products, uh, namely Doodly and Voomly, and I really like them. And I was going to review these two products, but Jen Jager did some great reviews on how they sound, and she was very honest about it. If you want to see those reviews, I've provided the links in this video and in the description below. So, my friend Gertrude is going to tell you how this works. Of all the names... You could have chosen Just for run me. the video. So, they provide you with a software product, either online like Speechalo, or one you install on your computer, like Talkia. You then type in your text and the software converts it into a language called Speech Synthesis Markup Language, or SSML. The software also adds script for the voice you choose, the speed, the pitch and any inflections that it is programmed to give to you. When you click a button, the software sends the SSML script to a text-to-speech service. This converts the text to audio, along with the prosody settings you applied. The result is then sent back to the software for you to hear, and possibly convert to an audio file. So, how good are these text-to-speech voices? Well, the products provide a mix of standard and neural voices. Standard is the older of the two and produces phrases and sentences by stringing together tiny snippets of pre-recorded sounds or phonemes. Now, if you repeatedly say the words literal, literate, literary, literally, uh, your pronunciation of vowels and consonants will vary each time. In a standard text-to-speech, they will be identical. This is one of the many noticeable differences between a synthetic voice and a real one. You'll be customising standard voices a lot because they only add inflections based on the punctuation you apply. And it doesn't understand what this sentence means and therefore can't emphasise it in the correct way. Neural text-to-speech systems are far more complex because they're based on AI systems that are designed to mimic the input voices. So they are streams of samples from many different voices and you can add your own. Um, and the systems that learn how phrases are expressed and this provides a more natural feel to what you hear. When we speak, we place a natural progression up and down a small scale to emphasize or understate a word. 
Standard voices change pitch, but without that natural slide. That sudden change in intonation is what we hear that gives that robotic sound. Because neural voices mimic the input, they also mimic the intonation, making them sound less robotic. But it's still a computerized sound, and when you customize the sentences, uh, it is digitally changing the pitch and rhythm, and it can sound robotic again. Now, recently, Talkia have began to offer a one-time standard fee to match Speechlow. Talkia is not even a year old, and they have changed their pricing platform after many have signed up to the monthly fee. You have to be careful paying for these front-end tools. If you're subscribed to the higher monthly package and don't use it for one month, you may still pay for it, depending on which product you purchase. So it is worth asking that question before you sign up. In addition, the prices will change and you don't get what you think you're paying for. For example, most uh, of these software tools boast many voices for your money, but how many of them are you actually gonna use? Most people on average are not able to use any more than between two to four of those voices because the voices are governed by the languages and dialects assigned to them. Now through SSML, you can program a voice to narrate your text in your language by ignoring the default dialect and phoneme patterns. However, these tools do not provide that functionality to you. It doesn't seem to be programmed in. So you won't use most of the voices, but you are paying for the privilege of all of them. Some of these services, like Speechlow, give you a limited number of text. Speechlow gives you 700 characters per conversation, um, as a standard, and 500,000 characters per month. What a lot of people don't realize is the character limit also includes any markup you apply to the text, such as speed, pitch, or emphasis of the voice. If you press enter to create a gap between the lines, that <laughs> occupies one character. So you begin to run out of characters and you end up rewriting your script to make it all fit into the service you pay for, which kills the impact you originally wanted in the message. Talkia removes this complication by charging you words per month and not for the markup you add. So it's possible that someone narrating a children's storybook with a small amount of words, small words, is paying the same, but getting two to three times less characters than someone narrating a fictional novel for adults or a science paper. Your turn, Gertrude. Most of these voice products are subscribing to very commonly accessible text-to-speech services provided by the likes of Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and IBM. The speech services charge the voiceover companies a monthly fee. They in turn take that charge, along with additional markup, and pass it on to you. So, why can't we simply cut out the middleman? Well, for most of these services, we can. If you go directly to these text-to-speech services, not only will you get more bang for your buck, but you only pay for what you use. Nothing more, nothing less. If you go 10,000 characters over your monthly limit, you pay about four cents uh, for standard voice or 16 cents or 16 pence uh, for the neural voice. Now compare 5 million characters per month for free to 500,000 characters per month for $47. It's a no brainer. And you still get all the prosody functionality uh, and a little bit more actually in most cases. Each service has its own strengths and weaknesses, and they all come with their own demo interface you can play with for free. But they are a little hard to find uh, if you don't know where to look. So I've added the links to the demo pages below. So in this demonstration, I'm going to have a tinker with my favorite, which is the Microsoft Audio Content Creation tool. And I apologize for the poor sound. Um, I had my PC sound in a loop within a loop in order to capture it, but uh, I did try and quench it as much as possible. But this is what I found and what I've kind of fell in love with. I'm a geek. 
So welcome to this rather quick demonstration of the audio content creation tool. I'm going to show you the demo interface for now. Uh, and even though it's a demo, it's got a lot of power inside this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a second or a follow-up video where I'm going to go into a bit more detail about how this works. And I'm also going to show you how you can log in and, and add the service add your resources and then sort of get yourself up and running so you can actually subscribe and use this for free with the um, what they provide on a monthly basis which is fantastic so you get this preset load of text with lots of high um, kind of demonstration sort of highlighted bits and bobs there that you can uh, listen to I'm actually going to delete that and what I'm doing instead is going to copy in my own text so it's all completely from scratch. Now I'm actually nicking a, sort of a, a scene, a very small scene from a, a very early season, actually first season of, of Friends. And this is when they got locked out of the door, uh, Thanksgiving, and they're all trying to find out who's got the key. So what you can do with these, which is really good, is you can just select um, each line and you can assign a person or a voice, that I say, to that line. So I'm going to click on the languages here and the dialects. And you can go through quite a few. And I'm going to pick the just the English United States for this example. Uh, and then I'm going to assign voices. So that one is actually Rachel in Friends. I'm going to pick Jenny for Rachel's voice. The second line then is Monica. So I'm going to pick Aria for that. And then you've got Rachel again. I'll pick Jenny. And the sarcastic line at the end there is Chandler. So I'm going to just pick Guy. So there we go. Now with these, you can select and with a line, and you can change the sort of character and the style in which the voice is said by using these speaking styles. So I can click on the drop-down arrow here, and you can see different voices have got different styles. This one's got assistant, chat, customer service, newscast, and default. So it's just how that voice gets across based on the circumstances of what the, the text is being said in. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, I'm just going to play this as per normal at the moment. I'm just going to click play. When we left, you said, got the keys. No, I didn't. I asked, got the keys? No, no, no. You said, got the keys. Does either of you have the keys? Okay, so very, very different to the actual scene. Might take a little while to actually make it uh, as close as possible, but you get the idea. I can go in there and modify different uh, parts, different inflections, um, the prosody, the intonation, with all these lovely tools down the right hand side. So I can add things. I'm going to just work on monikers here. So I'm going to choose, no, I didn't, I asked, and then she has a bit of a break there. So I'm going to add a very weak break using this break tool on the drop zone side. Now you've got different sort of methods of using these properties. So I'm just using the standards very, very quickly for this demonstration. Um, and I can also sort of emphasize or slow down. So it said, no, I asked, got the keys. So she kind of slows the rate down on those words. So I'm gonna scroll down, there's the rate. And I'm gonna change the rate here. You can use these up and downs and you've got such definition you can really sort of be very very fine with changing the the level you want so I'm gonna put that to 0.7 unlike the text-to-speech ones that have like you know five of them you know very slow slow medium and so on so I'm gonna set that and that to 0.7 just by ticking that box and you can see that with each property there's a different color and you can see that colors underlined so I can see what properties have been applied where and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the intonation, so the, the way the, the the words are carried across with the pitch change. So uh, Monica says, no, I didn't. I asked. Got the keys. So I would like that to sort of slide up. And this is what I love about Microsoft Tools. If I go to the intonation box here and click the edit, I get a diagram. And I can actually put in up to like five points and choose how I want um, that um, word to carry across in the in the changing of pitch. So I'm going to put low down first. Oh, let's delete that one. So I'm going to put on that. You just click, and then you just point where you want each level to go. So I'm going to just have it sort of slide. So I'm going to click the original. Ah, oh, look at this. So this is what happens with the demo. It's a little slight little thing. Um, it, after about five minutes uh, or so, or thereabouts, um, it will force you to refresh the page. 
and and this is so because a lot of people are playing with the demo and it's not so that you just you know kick everyone else out and sort of hog it so uh, it's a very small server the demo uh, for this unlike the subscribe ones you can go for um, and they'll give you a service of your own and you've just got complete very blistering fast power uh, in there so okay I'm not I'm gonna click um, I want to click done so it changes but you'll see I've got this error pop up and if I try and play this is where I get the message that says for web website safety concerns you're required to refresh the page blah 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 I'm not gonna click refresh because if I do that I will lose all my text and all the changes I've made instead I'm gonna click cancel I'm gonna switch to the SSML button here I'm gonna switch to that view and I'm gonna copy all that so I'm just gonna click in there control A to select all Control C to copy. And now I'm going to refresh the page. Wait for the interface to pop back up. Okay, so what I'll do is come back on the screen. I'm just going to go back to the SSML switch. I'm going to select all that text. Control A, delete it, and paste mine back in. Control V. And now I'm going to switch back to text. Not only have I got my text back, it's remembered all of my settings. So I can go in there and carry on tweaking. So I'm just going to do the intonation again. The same, same thing with the asked. So there we go. Now there's lots of powerful, I love the Microsoft one because it's got such um, fantastic graphical tools to do all this so if I had uh, a word that can't be pronounced or it's not pronouncing it properly I can sort of select if I just sorry Shiloh I'm going to nick your name so that um, is my daughter's name it's pronounced in the, in the sort of Dutch method which is Shiloh but here it says Skyler Skyler so to change that I can select that word and I can use the pronunciation. I can either do an alias, which allows me to just type in something that is as close to her name as possible. Uh, I can also use phonemes, which give you a bit more accuracy because not only can I pick uh, the syllables, not only can I pick, sorry, the vowels and consonants, but I can also put stress on the syllables and choose where uh, the important parts of the word should be emphasized. So it's a really clever set of tools that you get. Uh, and this is just the demo version. If you subscribe to Amazon and you go and get in your own service, set up your own resources, you're, you're laughing because you get some fantastic set of kits tools there. And lots and lots of power behind it per month, you know, sort of uh, one million for the neural voices. And I think it's like five million for these standard voices. The other um, limitation you've got on the demo is it doesn't allow you to download and output the um, the text to speech to a WAV or an MP3 format file. So you'd have to subscribe to get that. But as I say, in my next video, I'm going to show you how you can take advantage of certain tools that will allow you to keep working with the demo. Um, and still be able to copy the voices. I'm going to show you some nice little tricks in the next video. Try some of the services using the links below. Let us know which ones you prefer and why. And you can share your thoughts in the comments with others. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm looking into a lot more uh, than Office 365 recently because of the questions that I'm being sent. So you can contact me here on my videos. Uh, you can contact me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn email. Um, otherwise, stay safe and have fun.